What's up, folks, and welcome to Indie Ramble. I got a weird one for you today, but it's pretty cool in its way. It's definitely not going to be for everybody, but it surprised me in, in some interesting ways. And, well, when I first heard about this, I saw the art style and went, wow, we have a lot of pixel art games that resemble different console generations. That's the way I always like to frame things. We've rarely ever seen one that resembles the ZX Spectrum. And that's what this does here. So, yeah, this is Eight Colors Star Guardians. And, well, yeah, Eight Colors. <laughs> Am I right? So the ZX Spectrum was a platform that was mostly popular in Europe, especially the UK. And North American uh, gamers may not know about it very much, even if you're into retro stuff. Uh, but that's really the closest that this this resembles visually anyway. And, well, it's kind of a boss rush game, sort of, but it's... I've never really played anything like this, and this is what I why I wanted to show this to you here. So, we're playing the Switch version. This is also available on PC. Uh, there are two chapters to this, which are kind of self-contained stories, if you will. Now, I've actually beaten the first chapter, but unfortunately, I I can't uh, just, just load my game and replay other bosses. Loading the game, the game just takes me back to the end cutscene, basically. So I'm going to restart it here, but this will give you an idea what's going on. So this game is very simple visually. And not so much mechanically, but definitely in terms of the levels and things like that. It's got basically no load times because every battle in this is a single screen boss fight, effectively. So uh, you're you're basically this group of princesses who kind of turn into Power Rangers, effectively. Uh, it's all female characters, and you're you have to take out a series of monsters uh, to defeat an, an evil that's threatening to destroy your galaxy. That's basically what it is. There is a lot of conversation here that happens uh, in between the different fights uh, where the different characters reveal all their different personalities and they all do have very unique personalities. And, you know, it is it is what it is. It's kind of interesting. It adds a little bit of flavor, but you could also entirely skip it and not miss anything. So it's up to you. That's not an insult against it. Uh, I, I did go through it all, but yeah, you know, it's up to you if you want. So basically, here we go. So as you can see, yeah, they all look a lot like Power Rangers, and that's kind of the idea. So you're seeing a little bit of info here that it's that it's putting out. So this is where things get interesting. Every one of these bosses is quite unique in terms of their attacks, their resistances, their abilities, and the abilities that you require in order to effectively beat them. This is kind of like the old Mega Man games where in Mega Man you had bosses that you could attack and levels that you could attack in any order, but there was an ideal order. Uh, and that involved getting power-ups that each boss, or weapons that each boss was weak to in a particular order to do that. This is kind of like that. There are certain bosses you absolutely cannot beat without certain uh, pickups that you will get from other bosses. But you don't necessarily have to do everything in a very specific order. So that's where things get, that's where the depth of this game really comes in. So you see here, you actually have five characters. You can only take three into battle with you at any given time. You can see they have different amounts of hit points and spell points, and they all have different attacks. Now, as you take out different bosses, you will unlock additional attacks and abilities for the different characters. Because I had to restart here, we only have the basics, but it gives you a little bit of an explanation, you know, a fiery, fi a fiery fire roundhouse kick. It's a little redundant. Uh, and it shows the amount of spell points that it will take in order to do these different attacks. There are different kinds of damage. There's fire, there's light, there's electric, and there might be a fourth one I'm forgetting, I can't remember. And there's also physical damage too. You see high, high damage, triple punch, physical attacks. So yeah, physical is the other kind of damage. So, and you can see what each of these are here. Now, some bosses are immune to certain types of damage, uh, either completely or at different times. Uh, some bosses will take more, da just take more dam damage from certain types. So that's a thing you really have to figure out. And, and you ultimately have to figure out the order. So you can swap your characters around, change your party layout however you like, and you can confirm it, and off you go. There are also a bunch of different costumes you can unlock for the characters. I don't know how you do this. I beat the entire first chapter, and I didn't unlock a single one. But as you can see, there's apparently quite a few available. So I'm not quite sure how that works, but that is an option there anyway. 
So, all right. So I'll give you a quick little tour here of some of uh, these different bosses and show you how this works. So let's go into this one here. So this particular boss, it, it, like I said, it's only the, the boss fight. So it kind of plays like a turn-based RPG battle, but all you fight in each case is the boss. It's on this single screen thing, but all the bosses are quite different as, as are the arenas. This art style, it's not gonna be for everybody. I know that. It's very low res, very low color palette. It is emulating a very old system, right? But I actually think it's cool and kind of endearing and I like to see somebody experimenting with this. But I can understand if it's not for you. So you see here, you got all the stats of the different creatures. You have your turn order in the right there, which can be impacted by certain abilities on certain characters to change uh, who gets to do things first, or you can slow enemies down, things like that as well. And again, you have to learn the strategy for each character. And that can be what types of damage they're immune to. Like for example, by attacking with Juni there, I just healed this character, the, this enemy, even though he had full health. Uh, so you have to learn how they do things. And not only that, you have to learn the timing of what they do and their attacks. So basically the, the thing about this is that you don't always want to spend all your high value attacks early on. It's actually to your detriment in some cases to do that. And you're gonna have to learn the patterns of the different bosses and how they approach their attacks and when their strongest attacks become available because some bosses also have attacks that will make things a little bit, uh, that will actually make them weaker to certain kinds of things. And you have to learn that. So you're gonna have to fail these battles a lot. After you do one round, you can't see it under my big dumb head there, but there is a retreat option, which just counts as a failure. But when you fail, you just go back to the menu like we did here. Now, the first time you fail a boss, it will actually give you some information here. The characters will have sort of a, a discussion about it, if you will, and it gives you a subtle hint about it, about their weakness. So you see the electric head seems to be the one supporting the other. The ice head is very selfish in contrast. So they they will give you kind of a subtle hint. Sometimes the hints are not so subtle. Sometimes the hints are pretty obvious. Other times you got to think a little bit and be like, okay, how am I going to how am I going to do that? And each of these little dialogues as well will explain some stuff about the about the characters and their sort of little backstories and things like that. Again, you can listen to it. You can listen to it. Read it or not. It's up to you. And some of these conversations can get fairly lengthy. You'll also have one after you beat a boss as well. So you'll have to go around and sort of figure out what it is you need to do here. Some of the yeah, some of the enemies have wildly different amounts of health or magic or things like that. And you've got to figure out how to strategize against them. One of the interesting things I think is, is kind of cool too. So you see how um, the turn number, it says turn 20 up there. Yeah, the turn number increments throughout your entire run. So if you, it's not just per battle, it's per entire run. So by the time I finished this the first time, I think I was in the 800th turn or something like that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it can get fairly long. There's no incentive as far as I know for beating it early. It's just a way to track how long it took you. But I think that was kind of cool. So you see that one kind of smacked me around there really good, right? So now I could potentially beat him by rearranging my party and using people who are better equipped for that and have better abilities or maybe that boss is just not what i should be attacking first and i should go after something else in some cases there there is rng in this game some attacks will miss or do critical damage and sometimes you can just you know bash your head against the rng enough times and you'll win right and so that's the thing you've got to kind of learn that now you see this guy i'm not even hurting him right now right so i'm not this is clearly not one that's going to work out for me so you'll learn that and you have to figure that out as you go and that's what's kind of cool about this is this game is very simple its concept is, at its core is quite simple it clearly takes inspiration from mega man but distills things down into just these boss fights with this simplistic art style and dealing with your party management but that doesn't mean, yes, it's incredibly simplistic, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It's actually pretty cool in some ways. 
and there is actually a lot of hidden depth to this because i i said that i beat the first chapter of this in probably i don't know 800 turns or so right i could imagine that in some cases it could take people a lot longer than that um you know or less than that depending on how observant you are and how much you really are paying attention to the strategies and looking for the weaknesses of the bosses and managing their patterns and things like that i i think there there could be a lot of depth to this and i will tell you i've only started the second chapter and it amps things up a lot and the nice thing about that is the the your um save files are different between uh the first chapter and the second chapter so even though i just restarted this chapter i can still load back into the second chapter if i want which is which is cool so let's swap this person down here uh and do that in the second chapter it kind of at this point seems to be kind of like a, a remix or an arrange mode almost the first fight i have to do now in the second chapter at least to begin with you can't choose your battles you have to do it in the order it asks you to well that didn't work out uh, and the first battle that I had to fight is actually fighting two of the bosses from this level at, or this chapter at once. So that's going to change your strategy a lot because all of a sudden, if you were able to build a party where you could just focus on one particular strategy for one particular enemy, well, that might not work because now you got two enemies to deal with and you got to balance that out, which really changes the dynamics entirely. I think that's pretty, pretty cool. I think that's pretty slick and so there there can be a fair amount to this and i imagine that second mode which is it has its own story and stuff i imagine it's almost like a new game plus in some ways um is going to be quite a different experience and i think that's neat so there is a, there is a lot more depth to this than it looks like especially as you start beating bosses and start unlocking a larger number of abilities and some bosses like i said you're gonna have to spamming him with high level attacks early on is is you're literally going to lose if you do that and you have to really pay attention and figure out what they're they're doing this is a really good what i call second screen game i play i, my, I played through the first chapter of this while i had netflix on my second monitor and that was a great way to play it um because you got to pay attention to the battles but you don't have to have super laser focus on this to be able to succeed at it you know and they're there isn't much story and what story there is happens in those little text only dialogues so you can go through it pretty you know you can go through it while doing something else which is uh which is always handy so yeah i mean you're you're seeing the meat and potatoes of this thing here for sure um and like i said this game is definitely not going to be for everyone um a lot of people are going to think there's not necessarily enough depth here a lot of people aren't going to be able to handle the art style uh, I can respect that. If not, I personally think the art style looks pretty, pretty interesting. It's just, it's different for sure. And that's the key thing with this game is it's a, the kind of, a kind of game that I, I've never really seen anything like this. Not only something that a modern game that looks like this, but a game that takes the approach that this one does. This was made by a solo developer who clearly had a, they had a vision but they all and they but they were working within a limited scope but they decided to make the most of that scope and i think that's pretty cool actually i think the way that that this is approached is very interesting and has the has some really cool design elements to it um and there's a lot more depth to this than meets the eye and if you don't like the art style or can't get past that, yeah, that might be a deal breaker for you. But I really think if you like tactical combat and really having to learn how enemies work, you know, is this a Souls game in terms of depth? Absolutely not. But it, it, it shares a lot of the traits of that, of needing to learn and understand how the the enemies and the and the combat works to be able to get the most out of it and it's it's a much smaller scope and it's inexpensive too this game is is quite cheap and uh oh look at that skin of my teeth sweet
and yeah if characters drop during a battle they're just knocked out they're not dead right so they come they come right back and there's no penalty for that so there we rocked him that's actually not the boss i i beat first uh most of the time but you can see there it just says do a learned inversion so you can go here and i am not there edit party i always get the controls wrong on this so here yeah, this one I never really understood. It says swaps elemental weak to and absorbed one enemy. That's a kind of a bad explanation. I never quite understood what that was and I never really used it, but you probably would have to in the second chapter, right? So, um, yeah, so it's, uh, it, it, this, this is interesting. And I always like to showcase stuff like this that's kind of off the wall and different because it's one of those things where you know what i always tell people is i said the games i never cover what i think are bad games on my my channel i either cover games that i like or that i think you might like i actually do like this um am i gonna see it through to the end well we'll see how how much more complicated that second chapter is but i really respect someone willing to take a chance on releasing something with an art style like this that is this retro uh it's very uh uncommon you know even people who are big fans of pixel art often draw the line it's stuff that, that that's like this but i think in terms of adhering to that art style and sticking to that creative vision i think they did a great job on that and though this is not the most complicated tactics game you're ever going to play there is definitely a lot in here that you can um that you can draw from it and there is a lot of time you can spend in this if you want to get to uh, all the way through it and really learn the best way to play it and sort of min-max everything. You know, a little inbuilt achievement system might have been kind of cool just to sort of ring that extra bit of, you know, people attempting um, to get the most out of it. That might have been cool, but I still think there's enough here to keep you busy for a good while, especially for the price. And uh yeah, it's very interesting, and I wanted to show it off because uh, this the, I've never played anything quite like this, and I think that's always an accomplishment in and of itself. So yeah, that is Eight Colors Star Guardians Plus. It is out now. Uh, it's inexpensive. I'd give it a shot if you're you're on you know even if you're on the fence, I'd give it a shot. You might find this uh, you might find this pretty interesting, and uh, always like to 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 showcase stuff like this. That's trying to do do things a little bit differently so thank you guys very much for watching i do appreciate it if you like what you saw here please do all the normal youtube things and i almost got him man that sucks uh you know those do really help the channel out a great deal leave a comment down below tell me what you think of this does the is the art style just you know a bridge too far for you do you not mind it do you think it's kind of interesting what do you think of the tactical depth in this are there other little sort of boss rush tactics games like this out there i'd like to hear about those as well and you can also follow me over at twitch.tv slash px abstraction for multiple variety streams a week i'm going to be coming back soon doing retro stuff uh, primarily focusing on what i call the deep backlog for a little while that's going to be a lot of fun i think and we have a great little community over there and i'd love to see you be a part of it Thanks again all, and I'll see you in the next Indie Ramble. You folks have yourselves a good one. Take her easy.